Genesis chapter 4, and we are going to read from verse 3 to 7. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his fruit flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he God had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Verse 6, And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance falling? If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. So what we started to do is to look at two New Testament commentaries on this story of Cain and Abel's sacrifice because this commentary in the New Testament helped through light on the what, on the why, on the how that of this story in Genesis chapter 4. And we are looking at those two commentaries. We have looked at one of them already, which is in the first book of John, chapter 3, verse 12. And today, by the grace of God, we are going to look at the second of this commentary, which will be in Hebrew chapter 11, verse 4. So that is the first plan. And then we will then look at their sacrifice in light of their profession. And the question we are asking ourselves was, was Cain disadvantaged because he was a farmer? And was Abel, did Abel have some advantage because he was a shepherd? So we are going to look at that. We are going to look at their offering in light of their profession. And finally, we we'll then look at their sacrifices in the light of revealed divine protocol. The standard that God has placed, the standard and the protocol that God has placed with respect to how human can approach him. And the question we'll be asking then is, what is God's standard? What is God's protocol for a sacrifice that is acceptable unto him? Last time when we look at 1 John chapter 3 verse 12, we saw why Cain's offering was rejected. Today we are going to look at Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4 and we are going to see why Abel and his offering were accepted. So we'll read Hebrews chapter 11 and we'll read just verse 4. And the first two words in this verse is very important. By faith, very, very important. By faith. Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witnesses that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by he, he being dead, yes, speaketh. In fact, there are quite a number of concepts in this one verse. Now, we are not going to look into all those, but he said by faith. Obviously, you know, Hebrew chapter 11 is the whole fame of, of faith and we have characters and we have saints and we have men and women that walk with God and the Bible says that they walk by faith and Abel was included in that group obviously Cain wasn't and the Bible says that what Abel did he did by faith and the Bible tells us that it was by faith that the elders that the father obtained a good report that the good report that Abel obtained, he obtained because he offered his offering by faith. And we are going to dig a little bit deeper into what does that mean and what is the implication of that. Okay. So we want to see what this verse brings into our discussion. But before we look at that, let's set out the outline again. Abel offered God a sacrifice. Abel offered his sacrifice by faith. Abel's sacrifice was excellent. God testified of Abel's gift. In other words, God showed his approval. And finally, God declared him righteous. God declared him upright. God declared him in right standing with God. That is the outline. So, Abel's sacrifice, this verse tells us that Abel's sacrifice was accepted because he offered it unto God by faith. And that is very important. This is, this is the secret by faith. Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. You see, when we were reading Genesis chapter 4, we didn't really realize that this is why it was it's important for us to allow Scripture to explain Scripture. This is why it is very good for us to allow Scripture to throw light on Scripture. The Bible tells us here that the foundational 
that the fundamental reason why Abel and his sacrifice were accepted, of obviously by extension, the reason why Cain and his sacrifice was rejected was because Abel offers his sacrifice by faith and therefore him and his sacrifices were accepted. By extension, Cain did not offer his sacrifice by faith and therefore his sacrifice was rejected along with him. But the question is, what does it mean that by faith Abel offered his sacrifice? Abel's sacrifice was accepted not necessarily because of what he offered, but because of how he offered it. Now, what is offered is important, and we are going to come to that later. Okay. Now, you can bring the right offering, but if you do it the wrong way, it will be rejected. Obviously, if you bring the wrong offering, you can't do it the right way. Okay. But it is very, very important for us to understand that Abel's sacrifice was accepted, not just because of what he offered. The Bible says that the fundamental reason here is how he offered it. The reality, the force, the motive, the life behind his offering. Abel offered his offering by faith. Abel's offer is offering out of awareness. Now I'm digging into what does it mean that he did it by faith. Abel offers his offering, number one, out of awareness of human falling state before God, which is that they were unrighteous. And the need for God's mercy and acceptance, the need for righteousness. So Abel brought his sacrifice against the understanding of the state of human in their falling state before God that we are unrighteous and that we stand in need of God's mercy. We stand in need of God's grace that there is no way I can be righteous. There is no way I can earn righteousness, uprightness, right standing with God. There is no way I can earn that. I need the mercy. I need the grace of God to be accepted, to be declared righteous. So during this process that Abel brought his offering, he had that awareness. And that awareness informed his action, number one. And the fact that Abel offered his offering in accordance with God's revealed will of the process of sacrifice. In other words, he was aware of the need, but also he approached God according to divine guidelines that God has laid down. How did Abel and consequently Cain, how could they have known that? Because God actually laid down that pattern. God actually laid down that guidance, that protocol in the killing of animals to clothe their father, Adam and Eve. And like we said, they must have told these children, they must have trained these children this process. Praise the Lord. The third thing, we are looking at how Abel offered his sacrifice by faith. The third thing is that Abel offered his offering in dependence upon the promise of a redeemer that God gave to their parent in Genesis chapter 3. Remember God told the serpent, he said, I will put an enmity between you and the woman. Her seed will bruise your head, your seed will bruise his heel. And all this information, and this is what I want us to understand, that we must not pluck this event that we are reading in ch chapter 4 of Genesis as if it just happened in a vacuum. No, these children brought this sacrifice against the background of every other thing that has gone before them in Genesis chapter 1 to Genesis chapter 3. So Abel, the reason why Abel offered his sacrifice in faith is the fact that he offered his sacrifice based on all this reality, the awareness of those reality, the awareness of their truth, their awareness of their influence, of their implication. And then he did what he did in alignment to all those revelations that has gone before in Genesis chapter 1 to Genesis chapter 3. And it goes without saying that Cain did not bring his offering in faith. The, 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 the quality that we see in, in Cain lack all this quality that we are spoken about Abel. So his offering with himself were rejected because he did not bring his offering in faith. It is important for us, for you and I to understand that we must approach God not by way of Cain, 
but by way of Abel. What do I mean by that? The way of Cain is to say, I will, I'm going to approach God the way I want. I'm going to approach God the politically accepted way, you know, the 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 the, the, the way people accepted, you know, the, the way that it is politically correct or it is ideologically correct according to the ideology of man you know this this is what is trending okay we we are modern okay and i'm going to approach god my own way no that is the way of king and that way will constantly and will consistently be rejected we have to approach God, you and I will have to approach God by the way of Abel. What is the way of Abel? Is to approach God in the way that God has established. To approach God in the way that God has laid down. Romans chapter 10 gives us that kind of warning. Romans chapter 10 verses 2 to 4. Paul was applying this to the children of Israel, but it's applicable to us. He said, for I bear them record. That they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorance of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Christ is the end of of the law for righteousness to everyone that believe it. Obviously, we are going to ultimately find the fulfillment of all this in the person of Christ Jesus. But what I want you to see here is Paul was talking about the fact that the children of Israel and also people of today, the Bible says that they did not submit themselves to the righteousness of God. Okay? Paul was writing in a place, I'm not ashamed of the gospel for what it is the power of God unto salvation because therein is God's righteousness revealed. The gospel is the gospel because in it we find God's protocol. In it we find God's pattern. In it we find the way that God has laid down for our salvation, for our righteousness. And for us to ignore that, for us to reject that and think we can find you know, an alternative way to God, we are joking. We are not only joking, we are kidding ourselves. We are not only kidding ourselves, we are putting ourselves in a place of danger because all such effort will be rejected. In fact, I should say, are already rejected. So, Abel was declared righteous, not because he was perfect, not because he was sinless. Abel was not perfect. Abel was not sinless. The reason why he was declared righteous was not because he was perfect, was not because he was sinless, but rather because, because he came according to the way, according to the pattern, according to the protocol that God has laid down. Abel was declared righteous despite the fact that he was not perfect. Okay, he was declared righteous despite the fact that he was not perfect because of what he did. You know, other translation of that Hebrew chapter 11 verse 4 says that through his faith, Abel won God's approval as a righteous man. One translation says by faith, Abel was approved as a righteous man. One translation says, and so God called Abel a good man because he had faith, not because he was sinless. Not because it was perfect. Now, obviously, it, the state of righteousness then affects the way we live our life. We'll come to that. But we need to understand that Abel was declared righteous not because it was, it was perfect. He was declared righteous despite the fact that it was not perfect. Abraham also received the same commendation of the Lord. Let's read that in Genesis chapter 15 and then we'll quickly go to Romans chapter 4. Genesis chapter 15, just one verse, verse 6. And he, that Abraham, what? Believed in the Lord, and God counted it to him for righteousness. You see that? What did Abraham do? Abraham was not perfect. Abraham was not sinless. But the Bible says, Abraham believed in the Lord, and God counted it to him for righteousness. Romans chapter 4, verse 3. For what say the scripture? Abraham believed God. And it was counted unto him for what? For righteousness. Hallelujah. What we are saying here is that both Abel and Abraham received righteousness as a gift. 
you and I cannot earn righteousness. Just like Abel and Abraham, we will have to receive righteousness as a gift. But what is our own part to play? Abel and Abraham, they obeyed God. They understood God's commandment. They understood God's law. They understood God's precept. They understood the protocol. They understood the pattern that God has laid down and they obeyed. They didn't argue. They didn't look for alternative. They didn't try to negotiate. They obeyed God. And then God reckoned. Then God imputed. Then God credited their account with righteousness. And that is the way this thing works. We obey God and God credits our account with righteousness. How was Abel approved to be righteous? And how was his sacrifice accepted? Like we said, because he obeyed God, because he followed divine protocol and instruction. Like Abraham, Abel was approved righteous. His sacrifice was accepted because he obeyed God (laughs) and because he followed divine protocol and instruction. How will the devil be able to stop us from receiving the fullness of God's blessing by deceiving us to rebel, just like he did for Adam and Eve, to rebel and by deceiving us to disobey God? And by deceiving us to follow other protocol or to live a life that is directly antithesis or that is directly against God's protocol and instruction. And this is what we saw in the life of Cain. The life of Cain is a stark contrast to what we see in the life of Abel and the life of Abraham. And it's very, very important for you and I to understand that we go from the wrong side of God to his right side. Not because we earn it, but because we believe in and we obey God. I know I'm going through this ground again, but this is foundational. This is fundamental. And when we do that, when you and I obey God, when we believe and obey God, God then credits our account with righteousness because of our obedience. That is the pattern. That is the protocol. What then happened is that having changed location, having gone from the wrong side of God where we are exposed to judgment and wrath, having changed location and come back to the right side of God, what then happened then is that we then receive power. We then receive grace to live a righteous life. You see the way this works? That when we are declared righteous, when righteousness is accounted to us, and when we are in the right side of God, then we, don't, we then become candidate of God's power, candidate of God's grace, and then we receive grace to be able to live a life that is righteous, a life that is holy. And you will notice how this subject of righteousness kept cropping up every time we encounter act of sacrifice, righteousness sacrifice. We saw that first in the garden when God killed the animal and clothed Adam and Eve clothe their nakedness with the skin of this animal. Then here in the sacrifice of Abel, we see that also in the sacrifice of Abraham, we saw that this connection between righteousness and sacrifice. And we are going to trace that. We are going to see that all the way through the New Testament. And it will culminate ultimately and gloriously in the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. Just one example. If you read 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, let me read that for us. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. It says that, For he, God, has made him, that is Jesus, to be seen for us as our sacrifice, because he is our Passover lamb. He said he, God made Jesus to be seen for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him, that God can impute, that God can account, and God can credit our account with righteousness because we believe God. You see the way this thing works, and it is very, very important for us to understand this. Now, remember what we are doing. We are on a search. We are on a quest to understand why why, why Abel's sacrifice was accepted 
and why Abel was accepted and why Cain and his sacrifice were rejected. Why? So that we can learn lesson. So that we can walk in the way of Abel and reject the way of Cain. Now, let us look at the face value quality of the sacrifice that Cain and Abel offer to God in light of their individual profession. We know that Abel was a shepherd. We know that Cain was a farmer. So what we want to look at, we want to give them the benefit of doubt. Both of them have brought sacrifice from the product of their profession. Uh -huh. Abel brought an animal, Cain brought fruit. And the question is, does any of these two professions offer any advantage to the worshippers as related to their sacrifice? Okay, that is the question we want to look at. So let's read that Genesis again, Genesis chapter 4. Let's read that again. Genesis chapter 4, we read just verse 3 and first part of verse 4. And in the presence of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering of the Lord, verse 4, and Abel, he also brought of the first lanes of his flock and of the fat thereof. Now, it is very, very important for us to understand this because I think it is quite instructive. I think it is quite revealing that the Bible took time out to qualify Abel's sacrifice. Abel brought the first lane of his flock and the fat thereof. Now, we're going to stop there today. Next time, by the grace of God, we are going to look at what are the implications of that. As we understand what went on in this event, in this sacrifice. And remember, the reason why we are doing this is because it's a pattern for us. It's a type for us. And it's a lesson for us to learn as we walk in this way as we walk in this Christian life. The Bible says that all those things were written for our admonition. And that is why we are reading all those things so that we can learn from it and we can grow thereby. Praise the Lord. And if you are listening unto me today, look, there's no other way. There's no other name whereby you and I can come to God. We cannot earn God's, God's righteousness, not by doing penance, not by doing one form of religion or the other. Okay, we have to come by the way of the cross. That is the only way that is acceptable. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Come to Jesus. Accept you as a sinner. Receive him as your Lord and Savior. He died to save you. But you cannot experience that unless you are saved. You cannot force it on you. You cannot force it on me. You have to come by your own free will and accept him. And once you've done that, you will come in and the work of the cross will be realized in your life. The dead heart will be taken, new life in there. It will work with you the rest of your life on this side. When this is all over, you and I will then spend eternity with him as a member of his household, as a member of his kingdom forever. Do it right now. 